but, but my mother was, we were still fast doing the 40 day fast. But later, as we started going to high, to high school, it became more difficult. But we certainly kept the fast during the Holy Week, really kept the fast. Um, and it was as if you were living in another world. I mean, it was, uh, it was, uh, and particularly um, when, um, when uh, our, our Easter did not fall with the, with the, with the, with the, uh, with the Catholic Easter, with what we call it the American Easter. <laughs> um, and uh, so we were basically sort of pulled out of and, and in another world. Um, uh, and the, 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 the intensity of it, the reality of it, was, was something that I think uh, my, m many of my generation of, of Greek Americans, and I'm sure this, this would be true, of, I guess, in other, for others as well, but um, it was, a, it was a, an unforgettable memory. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that I, I mean, I, I don't go to church very much anymore, and, but I, I miss it in many ways. I miss more, I think I miss the feeling of what we used to have when we were little, that, that, that um, otherworldly, magical kind of being outside of time for, for about four or five days. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, another. <clears throat> um, I haven't read very much of these poems to you, I guess. Um, the, the other you might say, theme that ran through this being in the diaspora was xenitia. This feeling of being away from home, of being a stranger, of being alone, of being uh, not with your family, not with your kin. Um, it's a hard word to translate, I think, into English, xenitia. Um, the, the Iperots, of course, and it's not really unique to Iperots, but certainly the Iperots are sort of famous for their, their songs about Xenitia. Uh, because Iperots, of course, was uh, among the areas of Greece, I think, considered one of the more, one of the poorer areas, like uh, like uh, the uh, Many of the areas of Greece, of course, are not very well off, but Iperots particularly. So that you had a long tradition of Iperots leaving Iperots and going off. Um, Traditionally, uh, Iberos and Greeks would go off to Romania, would go off to Egypt, would go off to uh, the Middle East. I'm sure most of you know that there was not really major uh, emigration to the United States until really after 1890. One of the main reasons for that emigration was initially was the current crisis, the, the current C-U-R-R-A-N-T, there was a current crisis in, 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 the, in the Peloponnese around 1890s, I recall, when the price of currents fell. Um, and so you, you had the first beginnings of emigration going to uh, the United States from the Peloponnese uh, around 1890s in, in, a, in a major way. There have been Greeks there before, but nothing on a major scale. Um, and you really don't get Greeks going to, to, to America until the beginning of the, of the, uh, of the 20th century. And many of them were not going there to stay there. They were going there to make money, to well, to do two things. Usually, to marry off a sister or marry off, you know, marry off a cousin or whatever, uh, and make money to get it to, to build a house and come back. Uh, so they would, and, and usually they would be sending off the younger sons, not the older, so not the first son. Usually, the second or third son would go. And I'm speaking now, but I mean, as an example, in my mother's family, my, my, my grandfather's two brothers, he was the oldest, so he stayed behind to take care of the, the things. And the two younger ones were the ones who were sent. And they came to the United States about 1903, 1904, ended up in, 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 in Harrisburg. Um, and um, so this idea of going off to Xenitia to make, to make your money and to come back uh, and to build a big house. Uh, and to be so, and to sort of have a good life. I mean, not, not have to work anymore. <laughs> that was the whole, that was the dream. It wasn't. We were not. We, I guess I should say we, because it was. Uh, I, I I did not live it, but they were not thinking as that they were going to go and live in the United States permanently. Um, and of course, this was even true earlier. I mean, the, the Greek. I mean, keep in mind. I think it was. I think it was. Was it Thucydides or Herodotus said how what, what a poor land Greek, Greece is? I think one of them talks about how poor Greece is, and that that uh, that uh, uh, the Greeks really have to make. It's really rough making a life in Greece. And so you always had 
you always had the pressure, the population pressure of younger men to leave, to go off somewhere to make money, because there was not enough here in, the, in the Greece itself. Um, but the whole the dream was to come back. Um, so we were not we were not like the um, like say the Italians uh, or the Irish, uh, who for different reasons, uh, well, po well, sorry, poverty. I mean, because poverty is also a uh, reason why Greeks were immigrating too. But um, most of those people would think they were going to go there and they were going to make it, make that their home. That was not the initial idea. I, that's certainly what I what I remember hearing growing up in the '30s. Um, now, as time went on, and particularly with the coming of the Second World War and the and the break and and, and that break, then I think it. And also, the other thing that happened in the United States was the it was the immigration, the immigration laws of 1922, that made it very very difficult for Southern Europeans to to get into the United States, um, and so that the ones who were there already um, uh, began to think that they were going to be staying on. And the other thing, of course, was the Asia Minor, the Asia Minor catastrophe, where many Greeks uh, from Asia Minor. Were, 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 of course, uh, uh, driven out, and Greece was a no, could not take them in. They took millions, thousands in, but uh, many of them also had nowhere to go, and then they ended up in the United States. So there were many things that were going on that meant that by 1940, the, 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 the realization was that the, that the Greeks were, were there to stay. Um, and, um, uh, but this sense of being Senitia for the older generation. Now, for, for people like me, who was born in the United States, I, I knew the word. I didn't know really, I, I didn't sense the word. I didn't, the way it would have said for my mother, let's say, or for my father. Um, and so that when they, and particularly being Iberos, hearing the, the songs that they would sing about Senitia um, had a different resonance for them than they did, than, than, they, than, they, than they did for me. Because for me, America was my home. I mean, I grew up there. I was educated there. I mean, I, my everything, everything that I am, I own in the United States. Um, but the 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 for them, there was always this sense that that they had left something behind that they could never really forget. It's understandable, obviously. Um, and these songs, the songs of Xeni um, uh, uh, are 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 very very much a, an important part of that that tradition. Um, and I can read you. Uh, just one little, one little poem, or song rather, <clears throat> that uh, describes the uh, the feeling, a little uh, to some extent, of um, of Xeni, of Xeni, yeah. uh, here. Um, so I'm, I'll get it, Christian. So <clears throat> all were gazing at the sun as it set in royal splendor. And a girl with grief and sorrow scans the distant open seas. The open seas and islands where the ships come and go. Dear ships of mine, dear little boats that come here from foreign shores, have any of you seen my man? Have any, have any seen my lover? At what tables does he sit himself and at what taverns drink? What hands are pouring him the wine while mine can only tremble? What eyes look and gaze upon him while mine can only weep? Um, and this is, uh, this is, of course, a song of, uh, by a woman whose um, lover has gone off. Um, but songs also describe you know, what, how a mother would feel, too. The widow's son gives up his soul on the ship up at the prow. No mother has he to weep for him, no sisters, nor any brothers. The captain is there to, sweep, to weep for him along with his only son. Get up, my sailor boy, get up, beloved skipper, skipper and press the, the oars upon the waves that, may re, that we may reach safe harbor. Um, the, uh, there are many, many of these songs describing uh, this feeling of being away and of being uh, 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 bereft of, of, of kin and family. Um, the, um, I will read... I'm going to read you one, um, one that my that my grandfather that my grandfather wrote. 
my grandfather, my mother's, my mother's, uh, my mother's father was very famous in the village for his ability to play the zamara. The zamara was a, sort of a precursor of the clarinet. It, uh, it was just a long, really kind of a long flute, um, and it was it was in Ibero music. It was it was played very very much before the clarinet came in. The clarinet pretty much took its place, but it still played. Um, and um, it, 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 it's more flute-like than, than clarinet-like. Um, but here's one. This is uh, this is a, 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 a poem, a song that my, that my grandfather wrote. A charming group of friends of mine has asked me to start up and sing, and I'll tell them I cannot please, nor can I make them happy, for my heart, for in my heart I have much pain and bitterness on my lips. Heavy is life on foreign shores, heavy life in foreign lands, and no consolation for those who, though alive, are parted. Um, the, uh, in Greek, it, 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 the English really doesn't give the, the, the sense of um, um, or the sense of zondanos um, or um, The um, the idea that uh, even being a part in Senitia was worse than, worse than being dead. Uh, and that's expressed many, many times in these songs. I mean, it's kind of hard for us to sort of understand that. I mean, that uh, I mean, being dead is pretty, pretty awful, I would think. Um, but for, 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 for them, that, that, and this is, and this is expressed many times, that it's, it's much harder to be, out, to be parted from your friends than to be dead, or from your friends and your kin. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the other, of course, it, one mustn't think that um, it's all, it's all sadness, of course, and, the, and speaking of marriages, my mother, when my father um, appeared on the scene uh, in 1930, uh, it was a pretty, pretty uh, quick um, romance because he got there in April, they were married in August, uh, in July, actually, July 27th. Um, and um, the weddings there, uh, and my mother, in describing the weddings there, uh, and this is, what I, this is what I found very interesting, because what she described to me, uh, my sister and I lived in 1957. We ended up, I came to Greece with my sister in 1957 the first time, and we went to the village, and we were lucky indeed that despite the war and despite um, the, the occupation of the village, and the village had suffered very much. Um, the, 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 the traditions were still pretty much being observed, and we, and we were able to participate in my mother's youngest brother's wedding, who is still alive, he's 96. Um, and I ended up being the best man for that wedding. And that wedding um, was uh, carried out Pretty much as my mother described it to me, starting with the starting Wednesday, the weddings, the preparations for the weddings would start early when they did when they would zimona when they would get together to um, knead and prepare the the, the 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 cake the cakes that were that were going to be uh, exchanged on Friday um, or kolures as, as they say in Greek uh, special cakes. Um, and um, on Friday, then these, the cake would, one cake would be brought from from the bride's house to the to the groom, groom's house, and another from the groom's house to the bride's house. And uh, in going, for example, uh, to the um, to the uh, groom's house, uh, the people had, uh, and this vice versa. Uh, when you took the cake, you were also supposed to steal something from the house, uh, and if uh, and not be caught. Uh, and um, uh, we, 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 we actually, we, we did all that, all those customs. Um, the interesting thing too was that my mother was describing that in, in, her, in her mother's day, they did not wear white, they were red. Uh, uh, which is interesting because that's the color that the Chinese wear for weddings. Uh, and I think the Indians as well. And it's, and it's what I think the ancient Greeks also wore. Um, and um, in my mother's time, the first women who wore white were two of her friends in 1930. They were the first in the village in 1930 to wear white. 
she wore a rose dress because she said she wanted, she had decided she wanted to bring that dress with her to the United States and use it again. Uh, so she, her dress was rose, it was not white. Um, <clears throat> and the other interesting thing was that um, the wedding, the, 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 the uh, um, uh, group, the uh, bridegrooms group, uh, would go off to, to the bride's house and, we, and, we, and, and, and I saw this as well and participated in it, with music to go to the bride's house. And when the bridegroom uh, would get to the house, um, he would go into the, to try to get into the house, and they would not allow him in there. They would actually there would be a, a struggle, and he had to force himself into the house. But the bride was hidden. He couldn't see the bride. And so um, they told me, oh, the bride is not here. So... <laughs> Then he had to leave, and he had to leave the music, the musicians and everything behind, and he went with his pared back to the church, and then the bride came, came out, and there was special, there were special songs sung. And incidentally, everywhere along there was a special song being sung, and um, the, the, there was a, a, a song, "Exipna uh, 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 which is a, "Awaken my partridge-eyed girl, for I've come here to your garden." I have brought I have brought you golden braids to play plaid into your hair, uh, and I mean I, I we saw that and she, so they were singing this song and then and then uh, they would bring out all of her pika all of her dowry and the women would have to have it, it would be women of her of her family carrying the dowry through the streets with the musicians and she and uh, and her family we, we we got to the church. And at the church, the bridegroom was waiting, and we danced. Before we went into the church, we danced uh, a, a, a special song uh, in the in the platea, the church there. And then he took the bride. It was not the, it was, it was, she was not given away. He took her there, and, and they and they went in hand in hand to the church. And they were married. Uh, they had the marriage ceremony. Then we all went off to the to the bridegroom's house. The bride's family were not invited to the wedding. The bride's family came the second day. The first day was the bridegroom's party. Um, and um, again, this, is, this goes back to ancient times. This is a very ancient, ancient way of getting married. I mean, this, is, this is, goes back to, to uh, uh, well, it goes back to, to this, is the, this is the way it was. The, the bridegroom, I mean, it's, 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 it was all about the bridegroom. It was not about the bride. Now. Uh, in, 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 when, we, when we were there in 1956, the bride's family were invited, but in my mother's time they were not. Um, and moreover, not only uh, in 1930, when my father went and married my mother, um, the bride was supposed to stand there <laughs> next to the bridegroom uh, and not say anything. Uh, and. Um, Basically, uh, take uh, uh, bride with, bridegroom was, was was having a good time with, the, with his uh, with his with his uh, parea, and she would be just standing there uh, with her head sort of hung low. And my father was absolutely appalled by this. Said this was not going to not, not to continue anymore. And they stopped doing it after that. They, they didn't do that anymore. But again, this is another <laughs> another custom that was really very very strange. Uh, that, that they uh, uh, had, were still doing until 1930. Let me say in this connection that many of the villages, I don't know if, if you uh, know who the Sarakatsan are, but the, many of the people in this area are Sarakatsani. Uh, my grandmother was Sarakatsani. And the Sarakatsans are a very, were a very, very clannish, very uh, closed, Greek-speaking, um, uh, semi-nomadic uh, uh, group of, 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 of sheep herders. Um, and they were very, very, uh, uh, um, uh, as I say, very conservative um, and uh, very rarely would uh, uh, marry outside, outside their, um, their, uh, their group. It was only um, in the last in the last hundred years, as they were being settled, being forced by the, the, the government to settle down in various places, that they began intermarrying. Um, and many of these customs were Sarakatsan customs. Uh, 
a very old, uh, going back to a very, very old time, as I said. Um, the, uh, the um, other thing I think that I, that I also want to sort of mention, light on, uh, to touch on is, it wasn't a, uh, life was difficult, but there was also fun. I mean, there were people who did laugh and, 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 did, and did have a sense of humor. Um, and um, I'd like to, speaking of marriage and speaking of, of, um, of um, what it was like to, um, to live at that, at that time as, um, as, as a, uh, as a, as, as a, uh, a young woman and I see why I find something that's really, it gives you a sense of, some sense of humor so you can at least laugh a little bit. Um, if I can find it here. Um, okay. Uh, she says here, get up and dance, my girls, now that you have the time. Get up, soon you will get married, and housewives you will become. And your husbands will not let you pay a call on your mothers. And the children will not let you to visit other neighborhoods. And your mother-in-law will not let you go where there's a party. And your father-in-law will not let you go where there's a dance. We can make our husbands drunk and put them all to sleep. And our children we can spank and send them off to school. And the bad mother-in-law, day and night will keep her hungry. And the bad father-in-law, in the laundry room, will shut him. So, I mean, there's, um, you know, they weren't going to be, they weren't going to let themselves be, be pushed around, be pushed around that much. Um, at the same time, uh, we get this one. At the river, a country girl was washing when another came and asked her, my girl, why are you so, why are you so disheart, dis, disheartened and, you deeply, and, you're, and why deeply hurt and sad? What can I do on liking me with the husband I have taken? I have taken a sickly husband with one leg, lame and limping. Up on the fence he leaves his shoes, and in the dust he drags his feet. Until he gets a shoe on one foot, the sun has come and lunch is gone. Until the shoe is on the other, out comes the evening star so grand. So, you know, the, um, they also had a... Uh, or, a priest's wife, seated at the loom, was, was swinging her legs to and fro. And she was saying to herself, thinking over in her mind, Oh, I no longer want the priest, that billy goat with his beard. I only want a shepherd boy who can play upon the flute. <laughs> <laughs> so... Mm, no. So, anyway, at this point, um, I want to sort of come to a close by reading one long poem, but it's the, my mother's last poem. And, um, and then I, I can open up for questions, um, if you're interested in asking me any questions you might want to ask me. Uh, if I can find the poem, we have it here. Um, my mother was sick in the hospital, and um, uh, and I came in to see her, and she said, I, I, I and incidentally, when I say wrote the, the poems, she never wrote the poems. She would tell me the poems. Uh, it was amazing. I, she, she died at the age of 104. She died in, nine, in 2012. She was 104 when she died. Her mind was clear as anything right to the end. Um, and her, and uh, her memory was still quite good. Um, and this is, uh, this is a little long, so bear with me, but it's an interesting poem because I think it, it describes very much the feeling of a lot of people uh, caught in the diaspora. When I was a little girl, I had many dreams and fancies that I was a princess in the midst of two palaces. And I was wearing on my head a crown made of gold. Then I looked down at my feet and they both were without shoes. And I looked all around me to see if someone else was watching. At my side, no one was watching, only my shadow by me. Sadness that overcame me, my eyes filled up with tears. And one of my palaces asked me to, to learn why I was crying. And I answered and said, my heart alone knows the reason, and I bid farewell to you. I'm leaving for foreign lands, and I shall take away with me whatever you have taught me. The, the years went by and passed, they were beautiful and good, good and happy. 
and I remained caught between the two, not knowing which one to choose. The first one gave me birth, and Greece is its name. The second is America, far off on distant shores. Greece wished me all the best and said, don't go away and forget me. America welcomed me with all its, with all its doors wide open. I thank you, my, home, my first homeland, and you, my second homeland. You who embraced me oh so tightly, as if I were your daughter. Equal, I thank the two of you. You have been true mothers to me. May God bless both of you and watch over you forever, Greece and America. So.